solving proportions is like a puzzle that you're trying to figure out. You're going to use the facts that you learned in the previous lesson about proportions to find the missing part, as you can see there, represented by the variable x, and here, represented by the variable y. Whoops. Some facts about proportions that you need to remember from the previous lesson. First, they have equal cross products, meaning that when you multiply diagonally, the products are equivalent. And secondly, that at the course part of its definition, they are equivalent ratio. So in order for them to look different but still be equivalent, then there's something that's being multiplied across the, the rows of the proportion. So we have two different methods that I'm going to present to you of how to solve proportions. And as you're working these, you might find a slight variation of it. And in essence, you're doing one of these two methods. There are lots of different ways that you could explain how to solve many of them, which is one of the reasons why I really like proportions because I like to hear the different ways that you have solved these proportions. So first using cross products, if you multiply diagonally x times three and six times 10, you get three x equals 60. Then from unit two, solving equations, we want to isolate the variable. It's being multiplied by three, so you're going to divide by three on both sides to undo that. And you end up with x equals 20. The second method is multiplying across. And when you're dealing with whole numbers, this does tend to be an easier method. But as you're gonna see that sometimes there's decimals or there isn't a whole number that you're multiplying across. And actually, when you get into more algebraic stuff, instead of there just being x there, it might say x minus 1 or x squared. So when you look at this proportion, I notice that to go from 3 to 6, you multiply times 2. So if I do the same thing on top, 10 times 2 is 20. So some examples of this. First, 6 over 10 equals... 36 over x. This is one that you could do the multiply across method. I'm already spotting, and you likely are too. To go from 3 to 36, you multiply times 6. So I can do the same thing on the bottom. 10 times 6 is 60. So x equals 60. For example, b, however, though, I can't really think of what it is that you multiply 12.3 by to get 75. So we're going to cross multiply 12.3 times 100. You don't need a calculator for that. I have two zeros in 100, so my decimal is going to move over two places to make it 1,230 equals 75m. We're going to undo what's happening to the variable, so we're going to divide both sides by 75. And I've moved my calculator. One moment. Here it is. Okay, sorry about that. So 1,230 divided by 75 is 16.4. So M equals 16.4. You can use some estimation to check to make sure that your answer makes sense. 75 over 100 is like 3 fourths. So 16.4 is smaller than 16.3 and about, you know, a portion of 3 fourths of that. Now down here to go from 3 to 42, there is a whole number. It may or may not come to your mind. So we're going to multiply across. I'm sorry, we're going to cross multiply. 3 times r is 3r, and 42 times 1 and a half is 63. Then I'm going to undo multiplying by 3 by dividing by 3 on both sides, and r equals 21. You can use proportions in real life more than you ever imagined. Um, at this point in your life, you're, you're seeing more written tests or standardized tests than real life applications of this. But in the future, you will see more of these. So in the meantime, when your life is taking tests and things like that, you can use proportions to solve a lot of these word problems that kind of make your mind blow a little bit. 
I sat under a training one time about ways to make your ACT score really high. And what they studied was the students that make above a 30 on the ACT. And what they found was they use proportions a lot to, so, to solve word problems. So read it with me in blue. And I want you to write down this problem. So that means you might have to pause the video and go ahead and write that down. David drove 126.2 miles in two hours. Use a proportion to find how long it would take him to drive 183, I'm sorry, 189.3 miles at the same speed. The first step is to choose your framework. This is important. It seems like something very common sense and something that you would want to skip, but if you don't have it set up correctly, it's not going to work. So we're doing miles per hour. This is a standard unit rate, miles per hour. You are familiar with that one. And whatever word comes first is what goes on top of the ratio. So down here, when I set up my proportion in step two, I'm gonna put the quantities that relate to the miles on top and the hours on bottom. So my first ratio is the given ratio. David drove 126.2 miles in two hours. So I put 126.2 over two. That is equivalent to, that is proportional to, it is equal to 189.3 miles over X. And X is what I don't know, how long it's going to take that. And I can say that these two are equivalent because they were going at the same speed. Then I will solve the proportion, cross multiply 126.2 times X equals 2 times 189.3, which is 378.6. Then undo what's happening to the variable by dividing by 126.2 on both sides. Once those cancel, you're left with X equals 3 hours. You may have went about that another way. You may have found his, his speed in the beginning and did 126.2 divided by 2. And you got, uh, what would that be, 63.1 and then multiplied by 3, and that works as well. What you did is you divided here and then multiplied, which is essentially doing cross products. So let's practice these. You pause the video, try them on your own, and then compare with what I've done.
on practice A, you can see where I found the common multiple was 3. 4 times 3 is 12. So I ask myself, what times 3 is 24? Don't get tripped up and do 24 times 3 because that would be opposite of the direction that was on the top of the, of the proportions. And so H equals 8. Or you may have saw that 12 is half of 24, so therefore 4 is half of 8. For B, I saw to go from 2 to 4, you multiply times 2. 8.7 times 2 is 17.4. On C, to go from 5 to 6, there wasn't a whole number that I could find. <clears throat> so I cross multiplied. 5 times 19.8 is 99. 6 times J is 6J. And then divided both sides by 6, and J equals 16.5. Then on D, the word problem, a stack of 2,450 $1 bills weighs 5 pounds. How much does a stack of 1,470 $1 bills weigh? So I set up my framework first. I'm going to compare bills to pounds. And actually, this could have came out correctly if you did pounds to bills. Because as long as you did that, you still would have came up with the correct answer. As long as you kept it consistent in your proportion. So when I set this up, I put 2,450, which is the number of bills, over 5, the number of pounds, equal to, because we know it's proportional to, 1,470 over X, X representing the weight of the 1,470 bills. Cross multiply, you get 2,450X equals 5 times 1470 is 7,350. I ran out of room, so I moved it up here. I'm going to undo multiplying by 2,450 by dividing by that on both sides, and you get x equals 3 pounds. Again, check to make sure that your answer makes sense. I have fewer bills, so it's reasonable that the weight is going to be fewer than 5 pounds. Also, it wasn't quite half of the number of bills. If, that, if the new value had been 1,225 bills, then it would have been 2.5 pounds. But the number of bills is a little more than half of that, so it makes sense that three pounds is a little bit more than half of five pounds.